gonna show you guys my sourdough recipe from start to finish. My recipe is a three day process. On day one, I feed my starter. I do that at about 8 p.m. at night and then it's ready for me. The next day it gets all nice and active and I don't have to wait around for it the next day when I would like to make bread. On day two, I'm going to form the dough and then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator overnight. And then the next morning, I'm gonna preheat my oven and pop it out, score it, which is my favorite part. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop it in the oven and cook it. Okay, so let's get started. Last night I fed my sourdough starter. I fed it with 85 grams of rye flour and 85 grams of water. It's all nice and ready. Last time it got crazy and exploded out of my jar, so I'll show you that later. And now I'm going to auto lease my dough, which means that I'm going to add water to the flours that I want in my dough. I'm not going to add any starter at all, and that way my dough has a chance to get really nice and hydrated, and it gives that gluten in my flours. Um, a time before we start fermenting to get really stretchy and elastic. So first I'm going to add, let's see, grab my kitchen scale, get that guy zeroed out, let's make sure you guys can see, zero. So 35 grams of dark rye flour is what I use for this recipe. I like to be pretty accurate so that my bread comes out the same every single time. Zero that. 70, 70 grams of whole wheat flour. grams of bread flour. Give that a little mix. You don't have to use these kinds of flowers. It's just what I've been using lately. I really love it that, that uh, dark rye gives your bread such an incredible flavor. It's like no other bread. Okay, zero that guy out. Now I'm going to add 380 grams of water. I like to use warm water because I think that it um, helps it auto lease faster. I'm not a scientist or anything like that, but for me it works. That's perfect. 382, but Close enough for me. I will let this sit on my counter for anywhere between two and four hours, and I'll show you what um, what it looks like when it's ready to go to the next part. So basically, what you want to do here is just get all those flowers hydrated. Make sure all of the dry flour is incorporated. Scrape it all down from the edges. This is gonna make you not have to work nearly as much throughout the day. Your bread is gonna be really nice. And you don't you don't add your starter now because as soon as you add your starter, 
it starts to the fermenting process and you can overproof your dough. And overproof dough is is a uh, no good. It's flat, it's uh, dense and doesn't hold its shape, doesn't score nice. You guys know that I love scoring, so it's a big part of it for me. It's the best part of it for me. Even better than eating it, I think. I give most of my dough away, neighbors and friends and stuff, or not my dough, but my bread. I just can't eat as much as I want to bake, and I want to bake a lot, so. Okay. So, that looks nice and incorporated. It's just like really a big ball of glue at this point. There's no, no, sh nothing. Just no starter, no sugar, no, no salt. Not that I put sugar in my sourdough anyways, but just a big bowl of water and flour. This is gonna sit there for, for a while, then I'll show you guys what it looks like when I'm all ready to use it. But look how just very easily pulls apart. There's no elasticity to it at all. Just kind of a mess. So I'm gonna put a dinner plate on top of this bowl. Uh, I, I've seen people use plastic or saran wrap or whatnot. To me, the dinner plate works fine. I don't have to pull it off and get a new piece every time. I'm not all that great at that pulling it off so that I can reuse it. And, you know, you have sticky fingers when you're done. So I'm gonna wash up. I'm gonna put a plate over the top of this and I will be back when this is ready to use. So it's only been a half an hour and already I wanted to show you what it's looking like in the changes in the dough. So you're gonna wanna dip your hands or spray them with water to make touching the dough a lot easier. It's very sticky and then you won't get the dough all over your hands. And then look at how much more elastic that this dough is than, than what it just was a half hour ago. And then, you know, two hours or so, it's going to be really nice and pliable. And that's what I'm talking about, about letting it sit, making it a lot easier to, uh, to get that gluten structure. So before it was just ripping like that everywhere. Now it's nice and stretchy. We're gonna let this sit even longer. You can spray it down, make sure it stays nice and wet. And then just wait and we'll be back. Okay, it's been two hours. We're gonna check it out again. I'm gonna get my hands nice and wet. And look at that. Very nice and elastic. What a difference that makes. So now we're going to add our starter. I'm going to add 98 grams of starter to this. I'll show you how I do that. So my starter last night, I told you, exploded. This is all like crusted on from last night. And now it's back down a little bit. So let's add 98 grams. Okay, so I'm not going to feed this starter again until tonight when I, um, go about, I'm about to go to bed, like 8, 9 o'clock. Yes, I know I'm 103 years old. I go to bed at 9, like, every night. But I'll, when I, I'll feed it into this cup, and then I will um, I'll transfer it into a different cup, and I'll get this washed up so I can use it again tomorrow. I pretty much transfer my starter every single day, whether it has exploded or not. Usually I don't have the explosion, exploding, exploding problem, but 
Last night I did. Oh. Okay, so we're gonna keep our hands nice and wet and mix this guy in. It's gonna take about four minutes to get this fully mixed in. Just gonna fold it on top of itself. Knead it in real nice. Not only are we working that starter into the dough, but we're also working that dough to get it even more elastic. I still don't have any salt in this. I'm gonna add that in about 30 minutes. Once I get this all incorporated, this guy's gonna sit on the counter for another 30, then we'll do our salt. I like to add like 20 grams of salt. It seems a lot of salt, but it's the only flavoring besides the different kinds of flowers that you're gonna put in here. There's not gonna be any garlic or anything like that, so the salt is pretty important. Plus the salt helps that, um, helps the gluten really form together. So once the salt goes in, you'll see a big difference in the dough. I don't add my salt at this point because I want, um, want to have that yeast in there for a little while. Some of the salt, some people say that salt and yeast don't go well together. I haven't found that to be really like true on my end. Like I said, I'm no scientist, so I'm sure that it is true. Just I haven't noticed that I do do it anyway. It just gives me another opportunity to knead my dough for a while and why not? I'm sure you could add it now, but. I have found great success with it this way, so. Just do it my tried and true method. my dough ASMR. nice and mixed in to me. I'm going to give this another rest for 30 minutes. Be back to add my salt. I'm ready. So it's been another half of an hour and I'm ready to add my salt. I use um, coarse grain kosher salt. I don't buy anything extra fancy. I just use what I use for my normal everyday cooking. You can use whatever salt you have on hand. Let's see. There we go. So 20 grams of salt. Just gonna need that in again. It's the same process as when we added our starter. Just get that kneaded in for a good three, four minutes. Feels 
still a little tight, so I don't mind adding more water as my fingers get dry just to keep them nice and clean because I don't feel like this dough is overly wet. I'm smart and I would move that to the other side. Keeping it wet keeps the dough from sticking to my hand. So I'll show you this dry hand. If I get in there, it's going to stick all over me. I'll show you what that looks like. If you don't use your wet hand, it immediately starts sticking all over my fingers. like this the dough will tighten up a little bit and then like when you let it rest for 30 minutes or so it gets all nice and relaxed again so now that I'm I've got this incorporated I'm gonna let it sit for another 30 minutes and then I'm going to laminate my dough which I'll show you what that means in just a minute well, in just 30 minutes, but a minute to you. I'll be back to show you what that looks like in just a moment. It's been about 45 minutes now, and we are ready to get this guy laminated. <laughs> so, I'm going to switch over to the spray bottle. I'm going to spray a clean wax surface with water. That way we're going to avoid sticking to the counter because we're about to turn this guy out. So what we want to do is just pull our dough from the middle out and stretch it out nice and thin. pretty gentle with it because it is fermenting now so it's rising a little bit you're getting a little bit of air bubbles in there but you're gonna end up with like a big rectangle then you're just going to fold it onto itself try not to get a big bunch of air bubbles in there because that's not what you want in your final dough. And that is laminated dough. 
I'm just folding it onto itself. Sorry about my kids, if you can hear them, they live here. They're always noisy. So now you can transfer it into like a Pyrex dish, something clean, and I like a flat bottom dish for the next process. But we're gonna let it sit for 45 minutes now, and then we're gonna start our stretch and folds. So I'll be back then. I'm gonna get started with my first round of stretch and folds now. It's been 45 minutes. I have it in a new dish with a flat bottom. See how it's kind of, um, it's gone all the way to the edges. It's relaxed. There's some big bubbles from my lamination. I'm gonna pop those. I don't like huge air bubbles. It's not from fermentation, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. Anything else I see in there? That looks pretty good. Okay, I have wet hands and I'm going to reach in and pull it up towards me. Fold it under onto itself. There's another one. This is my favorite process for stretch and folds. And that's it. So now I'm going to wait another 45 minutes and do the exact same thing. Um, I'm going to do it three times. And um, depending on the third time, how it looks, I may do a fourth, but usually I'm good with three. So I'll know that my dough is ready to use because it starts to keep its shape. So when I come back in 45 minutes, this will be spread back out all over into the whole dish. And, and by the end of it, it will keep more of a shape like this where it's not oozing onto the corners, where it's just sitting here in, in kind of the shape that, that I had it in the last time. That means that it's starting to have a really good um, uh, structure to it. So then when I pull it out of the refrigerator tomorrow to bake it, it won't just spread out and be a big puddle. So that's it, 45 minutes, and I'll see you again for the next one. Here we are with stretch and fold number two. So even better than the last time, it has not gone all the way into the corners here and here or anywhere. And so we know that this is gonna be a great, great loaf because already it's got a lot of structure to it. Wet down our hands. Just like last time, we're just gonna pull it up till it releases from the dish. Put it back onto itself. Give it a little wiggle. And there we go. We are ready to wait another 45 minutes for stretch and fold number three. It's as easy as that. Oh, look at that. Get that out of here. Okay, be back in 45 minutes. Okay, we're back again. It's been about an hour, I lost track of time, so. Um, you can see that it's still a little bit away from this edge. It's done a little bit of rising. It's got a dome on the top of it. This is our third stretch and fold. And I think that after this, I'll check on it again in 45 minutes, but I would think that I'm not gonna do another stretch and fold. I think it's looking pretty good. So just like the last times, Feeling very soft, very elastic. Okay, so we're gonna wait 45 minutes again, and then we may just go straight into shaping and we may do another stretch and fold. We'll, we'll find out in 45 minutes. Okay, so we did three stretch and folds and I think my dough's looking really well. It's super domey. I was gone for about an hour again. I, I had to go do something, so. I didn't quite make it to 45 minutes, but it's looking really nice. It's, um, it's got a nice shape to it. I'm not gonna do another stretch and fold just because I know my dough. If it was looking still really flat, I would do another one, but, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to flour my work surface. It's 
we're going to get to shaping the dough. Flour the top just a touch. And I'm also going to flour my little phalanges. And I'm going to turn it out right onto the floured surface with the top facing down. So not quite as much as when we laminated the dough, but I am going to stretch it out a little. And then I'm going to grab these sides, fold it back on itself. So this is how I'm going to shape my, my loaf to go into my proofing basket. towards me just to get that nice tight top. I'm going to push some of the flour away and pull it towards itself. So I'm getting the front edge to curl under this way while I push on the back. And if your fingers start to stick onto the bottom you can Reflower your fingers. Okay, so now I have the top side of my dough up. It's all nice and bubbly. It's really soft and pliable. That's, we have to do that. It's a must do. Okay, so now I'm going to flour my um, towel here. This is what it's going to live on in the refrigerator overnight. So be very liberal with your flour. Some people like to use rice flour. I don't like the texture of that. It gets kind of grainy on me. But it doesn't stick to anything. So if you have sticking issues, try rice flour. It's awesome. Okay, so that's a lot of flour so that my bread doesn't stick. And then I'm just going to transfer that into my proofing basket. I know it's a lot, but better too much than too little. I'm going to grab this guy, give him one last little shape. And I'm going to turn him over and plop him right in. So then I'm going to squeeze this bottom just so it's nice and shut. Do a little dusting around the edges and on the sides that I can see when I rotate the, the um, proofing basket and on the top so that the towel doesn't stick to the top when I turn it over. So just like this I'm going to put it in my refrigerator not covered um, in a, any plastic. I'm just going to let it sit like this for 12 to 15 hours in my refrigerator tonight. I'm going to pop it in right now and then I'll see you guys again in the morning. All right, it's the next morning. It is about 7.30 a.m. Last night I put my dough into the refrigerator at 7.30, so it's been an exact 12 hours of fermenting in the refrigerator. I'm going to show you what I need to score my bread in the morning. This is all mostly optional. I highly recommend parchment paper. I cut mine into a circle. That's not necessary. It's just something that I prefer to do. Um, I use a pastry brush for cleaning the excess flour off. Last night I put a lot of flour on my bread and I want to remove some of that because it's going to be caked on a little. I use this uh, blade for scoring. It's just homemade. It's a, um, it's a chopstick that I cut off the end of and I stuck a shaving razor onto the end. You can buy these scoring blades at Amazon or some fancy kitchen stores. I just I just made my own. You're going to need my duster again. Full, mine is filled with all-purpose flour, but you can use whatever kind of flour you like. 
and some dental floss. And I use this to keep my lines um, and my scoring super uh, accurate. You don't need that, but I prefer it. So I'm gonna grab my dough. It's been resting. It's very cold. I just pulled it out and it's looking good. It's looking about the same as I, it was last night, which is um, what I expected. It doesn't do a ton of rising in the fridge overnight. I'm going to get some of this dusted off. Be very gentle because this is my final dough. I do not want to squish any of the bubbles out of it at this point. I'm going to lay my parchment over the bottom. I'm going to put a plate over the top there and then just very gently don't squeeze down on it just turn it over onto your plate lift your proofing bowl off now gently as you can be pull off this towel you don't need to use a towel I like it because I don't like the lines in my proofing basket to show on my bread and if you don't use a towel there will be rings all around your bread which is pretty it's just not what i wanted today so just like before i'm gonna dust off some of this excess flour and i am being gentle i'm just not sure if how gentle you're being is going to show up on camera. My oven's been preheating at 500 with my Dutch oven inside of it for an entire hour. I'm going to get rid of this extra flour so it doesn't burn onto my parchment and I can reuse my parchment again. Look how dirty. I do cut my parchment a bit bigger than my dough because when I put this in the Dutch oven, I don't want to burn my fingers. So I'm going to lift it like this and just lower it down into my Dutch oven. So now I'm going to reflower it. This is nice fresh flour. It's going to give me a very smooth canvas to work on. And I use more flour than you think that you need. And then rub it right into the surface of your dough. I guess I did a little premature wipe away there. Got excited about it. Wipe that away again. You can wait and so that you only have to do one of those wipings. Okay, so here comes the fun part for me. I never know what I'm going to do. I, I try to come up with a game plan and then I always end up changing my mind and, and uh, just kind of wing it. Today, last night I should say, I tried to come up with a game plan just because I knew that I was going to be videoing what I was doing this morning. So, show you what I'm going to do. The scoring is all, you know, personal preference. Some people like a big ear, so they'll just cut one huge uh, slice that's very deep all through so that they can get um, a bunch of oven spring and, and, uh, it looks really beautiful. I love the designs. This is my very favorite part. I know that I have said that before, but I just love it. So I'm using this floss to just mark out a grid here so that I can, my, so that my pattern will be as um, symmetrical as I can possibly make it. It's not gonna be perfect. It's never ever perfect. 
Not only that, but you don't know really what this bread's going to do until you pull it out of the Dutch oven. So you have to bake it covered for, you know, 20, 30 minutes, and you have no idea what it's doing in that Dutch oven. It could be completely exploding and ruining your whole uh, design and everything, or it could be working out perfectly. You never know, and it's just terrible, terrible to have to wait. Okay, but it's exciting. I'm going to make sure that my blade is nice and clean. If, um, if you've used this blade for multiple times, you want to switch it out because you want it to um, be as easy to cut as possible. So I'm just going to go in with some V's here. I decided last night that I would try to do like a simple pattern, something that wasn't too crazy. Just in case my, um, you know, just in case it explodes in the oven or, or whatnot. So I try to get them about the same size. There's a, there's no telling really what it's going to do. Now I'm going to go and do the opposite of these. I do try to take my time when doing this part because I want it to look pretty. I like it when my stuff is visually appealing. It's the photographer in me. Sorry for blocking the view for a second. Just doing the exact same thing I did on the other side. I have not done this pattern before. So we shall see. How it ends up being. I'm not going super deep with my cuts. I'm just cutting a lot so that I have a lot of um, a, a lot of expansion places for my bread to expand, and hopefully it won't end up in a huge mess. So back again. We're just switching off every time, and I'm going along those lines that I drew with the um, dental floss. I'm trying not to cross over onto this side because if those two connect, it will be a big um, expansion joint. And I want it to, to be all separate. I'm just going to continue this pattern all throughout.
you feel it dragging a little bit, you can clean off your blade. Just be careful. Okay, so I'm going to pop this guy in. I'm just going to wipe away some of these, well, pat away some of these other lines that, so that it doesn't look stripey. I don't want to rub it because then my flower will get into these creases and I want it to be um, really prominent. That's why I flower the outside of it so that the outside will stay white and the um, inside gets nice and toasty brown. Don't want those lines on there anymore. Okay, so you can see how it's already expanding the deeper cuts, like this guy um, got a little deep and so it's expanding more. So they're not gonna be perfectly even. Um, I'm not a machine, so I can't do that, but uh, I, I think it's gonna be pretty. Hopefully it, it expands nicely and, and we'll see. I'm gonna bake it for 25 minutes covered and I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna bake it for another, uh, I'm not gonna pull it out. I'm gonna pull the lid off. I'm gonna bake it for another probably 30 or 35 minutes, but I'll check it at 30 to see if it's expanded or if it's uh, cooked all the way through it, like a nice brown top and make sure that my inside is, is all the way done. So I cook it with the lid on because I want the steam in there to help it rise and I don't have a baking oven I just have my standard old kitchen oven so if you don't have a Dutch oven you can put it on like a um, a pizza stone and you can put a pan of boiling water underneath it and that will give it a lot of steam but the Dutch oven is my favorite method so I'm gonna go pop this in the oven and I'll be back So she baked for 25 minutes covered at 500 degrees and then again without the lid on it at 475 for um, another 25 minutes. If you're, if you're not sure if your bread is done, pop an instant, uh, instant read thermometer in there and it should be about 205 degrees internally. So this is what I mean about you never know how it's going to turn out. She exploded a bit. Um, I could have done these cuts a bit deeper and I think they would have widened out like this. So I am going to try this, um, this, uh, design again, because I think it's going to turn out beautifully where it didn't explode. It's super pretty to me. So, um, I don't consider this a fail, but, um, I do want to end up having just a perfect dome with this design on the outside. So if you can see, it's nice and puffed up round it sounds hollow inside and that's a great indication of whether your bread is finished or not so even with the little explosions listen to it that is good bread so you do not want to cut into this guy until it's completely cooled otherwise you're gonna have a gummy crumb and um, so I know that it's hard to resist, but you know, the smell in your house is amazing and it looks and, and is so exciting to cut into and see what it looks like on the inside, but give it time and uh, you will not regret it. All right, well, thanks everybody and 
And if you try this recipe, let me know how it turns out. If you have any struggles or if you think that I forgot anything or anything is unclear at all, um, let me know and I, I can walk you through it. And also, this is not like the tried and true only recipe that you can do. There's no wrong way to do sourdough. If you enjoy the results of what you're making, then it's right. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, sourdough is only um, this or that. It's just not true. It's it's whatever you like to have, Is that's how it works. If your method works, if it works for your schedule, I know it's a long process, um, it, then it's good. There's, there's no wrong way to do it, as long as you're happy with the result. If you're not happy, then holler at us and we will uh, try to help you out as much as we can. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you guys soon.